It's finally time to reveal Millennia's final ages. In this video, I'll be playing through to the end of a game. There's some glorious, if not slightly off the wall, things to explore in this video. With my thanks to Paradox Interactive for sponsoring it and providing me with an early look at Millennia, you can check out the game below. Let's go. And welcome back to the Age of Alchemy, where we left off last time, now turn 191. As you can see, I'm just about through to the next Age 7, the Age of Revolution. Just got this one more technology black powder, a unique one to the Age of Alchemy, to research. Otherwise, I have four beautiful big cities, big regions under my control, uh, as well as some vassalized territories too. Of course, we have the Japanese down south, and then if I zoom up the top here, I see we're being settled by our Greek friends. There are two more players that I still have to discover off in the fog. Uh, and I'm going to slowly make my way north up here as well in what just seems like an infinite row of barbarians. And I'm going to send a little settler up to see if we can get some more vassalized territory. And that, my friends, is basically the situation that we find ourselves in. Of course, this video, as I've already said, will be about the later ages. And just as last time where I played through the entire lead up to this, uh, I will skip through the turns where it's a bit boring, where I'm not doing much, just kind of panning around waiting for stuff to happen. Let's move through. Turn 196, I've cleared the way for the settler. So let me place down what is now known as Corneth, uh, a new vessel. There's some reasonable food nearby. It should grow fairly well. Bring these troops back to base. Oh, there's a fairly large opposing army up there. I'll just get you boys to hold tight. Uh, we've got some extra diplomacy experience. That would be an understatement. So we can, can convert it into a social fabric point. A reminder that these provide sort of uh, general broad based bonuses. Quite weak by themselves. But once you stack them, it can make a difference. Like minus seven to research, for example. Uh, and these can also lead to victory conditions. So we need to keep that in mind for later in the game. It is not actually the end of the world to do this. Although often these benefits will be stronger. I can rush my cultural power, which I'll absolutely do. I think it's a great, great spend. But first, let me finally select the age. I don't think I need to get any of these other research items, at least not right now. I'm going to push through to make sure that I am the one setting the pace. A reminder, it is the player to first move through to the next age who determines ultimately the age that everybody will face. So I'm keen to be first. Likewise, I'm going to use that Eureka again just to get the ball rolling. And of course, now the game gives me this overview. I can see that the Age of Revolution is being researched by me, not revolutionary me in the north. And, and we're about a quarter of the way there. Good stuff. I just have infinite oozing amounts of points to spend here. And actually, some territory where we have some free space and we're short of yield. So it might be a good idea in a place like Antioch, for example, to start looking, okay, which of these goods can I improve? Flour is the standout obvious one because it gets converted into bread. It's kind of an easy win. Cooking, oven, slap that down, check into the city again. Now that's being converted. We're getting the highest value good that we can. And of course, in this case, a shite load of food to help this place grow nice and big. Furthermore, as I'm this dude looking slightly nefarious, the inventors, I have a special power as well. I keep forgetting. Construct Inventor's Laboratory for 36 engineering domain points. It's not that expensive. I can plop it down in these often less useful kind of dry tiles and work it for knowledge and innovation, hopefully to keep the chaotic events at bay and continue to be innovative. A fairly cool and slightly unique tile for us, so I might as well make the most of it in these empty spaces. But two turns away from advancing now, turn 204, and our barbarian explorers up here to the north have stretched their way through, destroying camp after camp. We've found one of these goody huts from the very beginning of the game, where I can get a tempting amount of experience or a unit. Sure, let's take the unit. Why not? Okay, a reasonable pickup. For now, our even stronger barbarian slayers to continue clearing out this land. My plan being to vassalize the coastline to stop anybody coming across and easily taking territory. I can turn to this midland a little bit later on, right? It's not as urgent. We have our revolutionary buddies up here in Olympia, who I might actually test something out on in future, because before I move through the ages, I wanted to make sure that I picked up some of these. Dragonfire artillery. I figure 
It's unique. It's kind of fun. It might look cool on the battle screen, so why don't I build one, piece together a little bit of an army up here, and go and squash these revolutionaries to the north, just to see, you know, what this stuff looks like. But of course, I can do that at any point in the game. It doesn't have to be right now. Those guns, those artillery uh, cannons won't go away. I have also made sure to build all of the unique buildings, just in case. Might queue up one more of those and see what happens. But otherwise now, we're moving through. And you'll notice the color has immediately shifted. We've moved out of that alternate age and now into a standard one. So the map will return to its normal look and feel as I, Greece, of course, take us through to the age of revolution where revolutionaries, very strong barbarians, will appear to free your regions and form new nations. We've experienced this once already. A power becomes a new need and also the air force. We can now attack and defend, of course, the skies using the new technology. No revolutionary Greece. I will not be your ally. Uh, let's quickly take a look at this screen. Of course, loads of stuff to unlock. More advanced science. You can see, as I was just saying, the Air Force air units now available in the game, as well as some key upgrades like steel, for example, and the massive power, the rare earth metals that it will bring. You'll also notice over here on the right, loads of alternate ages, including an early victory age here with the Age of Generals. If I can muster an army that actually needs to be frightfully stronger than it is right now. Goodness, I am weak. Uh, then I could move through and win the game early. Alternatively, we have the Age of Dystopia and Utopia as alternate pairs, as well as the standard Age of Rocketry. I think Utopia could be a win for us as the engineers. We have more innovation than most. I may be able to trigger the innovative events. Alternatively, I could go to war and trigger dystopia. Uh, nonetheless, there's plenty to research. I see that rail also leans into innovation, just giving me a one-off boost. So there are often little ways like that to tinker with how you'll progress through the ages. Urbanization will be great for growing my centers as well, with food buildings, but I need to be aware of that power generation. It's something that I find is difficult to address early on, unless you get quite lucky with coal or something like that. And so you just need to be a little bit careful about how, when, and where you expand. However, when it comes to power, sometimes the natural world will provide. In this case, there's a little bit of oil just outside of Argos. Argos is currently just meeting its power needs, so it's going to need some help. I'm going to claim the territory to grab it straight away. Thank you, Exploration Power. One of my favorite things to do. Uh, uh, I also like to use it sometimes in slightly nefarious ways, like building out here to steal that, for example. But nonetheless, once I have this oil whoop connected up, I can also now finally spend some of these specialist points on these more advanced improvements. And as we move through the game, these specialist points, rather than the standard improvement points, will become more and more important and hard to come by. But nonetheless, with the oil well online, Argos is now well and truly meeting its power needs, pun absolutely intended. The innovation culture power, while I generally would prefer to create towns to help my cities grow or use the Eureka for science, maybe raise army if I'm in a pinch and I just quickly need some units, like, uh, actually, like this. Like what's going to happen probably right here. Shoot. Okay. Uh, of course, I can also lean back in on this stuff if I hadn't just spent all of my stuff. Okay, I take it back. I was going to use Cutting Edge because it gives plus 20 innovation. But actually, as I speak, I see that these units are going to be necessary to station there just to try and defend that area. Because it looks like, uh, <laughs> as is typical of the age and absolutely in its namesake, revolutionaries have appeared in the Age of Revolution. Luckily, my standing guards in most towns and regions around here should be enough to defend I might lose a few tiles in the process though. What I don't want to lose are towns. So I also need to make sure that I have units just sort of standing in and around the towns to make sure that they don't simply get pillaged immediately. Every town is under fire. Oh my goodness. I didn't expect the revolutionaries to gun for those towns, even though I'd literally just said I need to protect them. Uh, the barbarians up are, uh, in my opinion, at least slightly less aggressive. Whereas these guys were just like, oh, towns to attack? Let's throw ourselves at them. Uh, luckily for me, I have a, a fairly strong standing guard. My militia, fairly good. And we've settled Sparta, turn 216. Did that last turn. 
got my coastline vassals sort of roughly set up. And now I'm starting to reach into some of the later game research, right? We're in the seventh age. Uh, things are starting to get hot. Applied science, for example, and like actually a lot of these improvements, starts to really drain on your power, but you start to get things like fertilized farms. Our existing food supplies and infrastructure will increase significantly as well, with more efficient factories taking place, like the milling factory now, turning out more flour per wheat or rice than the previous, but again at the cost of power, right? So it's all about sort of upscaling, and things really do. The ages start to get longer. Things start to become more impactful. And I've got one of each innovation event. It's a flip of a coin at this point between these two, but I'm really going to try and move toward Utopia because I think it's the more exciting of the two. And I did cover Dystopia a little bit in the tutorials that I made for the Millennia channel. So I'm keen to try also something a bit new. Turn 119 and I have the option of just marching straight in and destroying Olympia here. I have an artillery waiting in the wings, but I'm not sure that I want to do that because it will generate chaos. And ideally, I'd like to keep moving toward innovation. I have this new host world fair power that we just talked about, I just unlocked. And I kind of want to do that instead of cutting edge. So I'm going to. Let's get this super special improvement down, I suppose, just wherever I can build it. We're running fairly low on space. Let's build it in Argos and take a look at this bad boy. Converts one invention or research into one exhibition, which provides a whopping three knowledge, one culture, and 25 wealth. Hello. Let's make sure that we have some inventions in the city just to be safe. I probably already did. Yeah, down south. But hey, it doesn't hurt. Now we're generating a shite load of stuff out of that world's fair improvement. That is mighty strong. I see why you can only have one per. Even just the research alone, the knowledge. You'll notice I'm only getting about 50 in age 7. So the research number does tend to stay relatively low compared to what you might be used to for quite some time in millennia. I also see some tantalizing oil just out of reach. Let me spend the ever increasingly more expensive but well worth it <laughs> exploration domain experience to nab this tile uh, off the Japanese before they get there. Uh, bad news, kind of being pushed back a little bit, right back into Sapporo, though the Japanese army seems to have weakened a little bit now. But Fukuoka is really not looking pretty, uh, with my army, by the looks, being, oof, being really heavily harassed by crossbow mercenaries. On the bright side, though, I have just captured Nagoya. Unfortunately, it's added 20 chaos, the two now running neck and neck, but that's a good blow to the Japanese, who have seemingly put their army into the sea. Ha ha ha! We'll gladly take advantage of that, and I think probably just defend. Maybe there's an opportunity down here with this sort of ragtag army that I'm just slowly putting together to deal a little bit of damage to these veterans. No, there is not. That is far too tough. Stay put. Guard yourselves. Defend yourselves. We'll keep just sort of slightly trying to chip away at them. I think this will still... Oh, I should have done that first. I think this will still definitely be a victory. It's just a question of what can I take? What will my spoils be uh, as the victor? Okay, on turn 230, they've kind of moved almost exactly where I wanted them to. Not that I realized it at the time. We have 198 strong army down this way that I think I can route through and get if it weren't for this... <laughs> This knight, this horse standing in the way. All right, now these guys can move through. We are a little bit weak. So are they. Little bit of a risk, but I really want to get the damage in while they're in my territory. Likewise, this army here, uh, probably a much better attack actually for me to move into because they are at least a little bit weaker. And through a combination of weak trebuchets and powerful dragon cannons, we should be able to deal quite a hefty amount of damage there too. One turn later, cleanup crew is ready to finally do their job. Wham bam, thank you ma'am, four dudes down. Would you like to take some units out as well? Yeah. Go on. <laughs> some highly trained units uh, go down. And just like that, I think we have another set of dudes. Yes, we do. They just don't quite have the movement and I don't quite have the warfare experience to push. And on turn 233, 
The final innovation event that I need to unlock the Age of Utopia has given me times to attack versus armored units on my early machine guns. Could arguably be better to take the money there, but I'll go for it nonetheless. I am, however, still at threat, at risk of that Crisis Age moving through, so I've made sure to use the propaganda culture power to get my chaos nice and low while I'm just sort of moving back through making sure that I get things like harbors and <laughs> other printing press. Public works, loads of good things to grab, and then I'll be able to hopefully and fairly swiftly pounce through into the Age of Utopia. We will see. It doesn't get locked in like a Crisis Age does, so there might come a point where urgency takes over, and I just have to do it as quickly as possible. Uh, time will tell. Hopefully, because I'm not doing any aggressive wars, it won't come to that. I feel as though it's finally my time on turn 238 to enact this dastardly plan and remove one of these towns from Kyoto. I don't want to take it because I don't want to surge up in chaos and lock me into dystopia. So instead, we're going to cripple the town. Now, of course, bringing in my tanks, which seems to be holding up a lot better, as you might expect, uh, than every other dude in my army, are generally much stronger, of course. We should be able to crack it with this second attack. Yes, with only two dudes left. Drop that down, of course. In case you didn't know, you can, you know, drop it down there, take a look, see who's dealing how much damage. Of course, in this case, it doesn't matter too much, for we've destroyed the town and crucially not created chaos, right? Taking the city would, destroying the town will not. But look at the way it frees up all of this territory now unclaimed. So the influence generation out of Fukuoka. We'll be able to grow and expand and take these, and of course I could manually claim them if I had the ability to do that. In fact, with that town destroyed, it might be a good opportunity now to say, hey look, we've done enough fighting, you know, you tried to attack me, it didn't work very well for you. Let's call it a day so that we can both get back to researching crucial technology that we haven't researched, improving our empires which are currently burning down as we speak, and crucially reduce the unrest that's being generated as well, because if my cities grow in their unrest, they'll really start to fail. It can be brutal if left unchecked. Ah, <laughs> so, turn 244, I've just used my exploration power to claim this tile, which is the town. However, the AI, being the dastardly devil that it is, has indeed moved a settler in and immediately captured it before I could even think or contemplate doing such a thing. I've also been diligently going back and researching things that I missed, like construction and arts. So it's decided. Urbanization, with the ability here to increase the max town level my regions can support, allowing me to screw them over just a little bit more, will also be the final technology that I'll grab to move into the Age of Utopia. I should do it sooner rather than later, just in case things take a turn for the worst. We also in our first harbour, have our first ship online, and it's not just any old ship, oh no, we've skipped the early ones and gone straight for a Greek battleship. And on turn 253, I should say, I think I've ran into the final border and likely the final player in the game. Again, cities desperately trying to keep up with all of these upgrades. I could start to rush some of them. I don't necessarily need to right now. What we do need is power. So I need to keep hustling and adding as many of those as I can. With all of the players met, the turns ticking through might get a little bit slower as I start to see more and more actions. Here's yet another innovation event offering me plus four faith from regions, which I actually do need. And there's the final player. And as I'm moving through to turn 161, I've huzzah for the first time taken the timeline through to the age of utopia. The only age I think actually in this era, not to confuse terms, that I haven't tried yet. Uh, so I'm quite excited to see it. It is obviously a little bit more of a what if situation. Ocean settlers can settle regions in deep water with unique buildings, improvements and goods. Unrest gain from active war is two times greater. It is of course an age of utopia. Naval units cost less. Uh, new governments and spirits as always and international factions develop as well. This is where Millennia, I believe, really takes into its own now. We're starting to play with almost everything that is available, almost, and also we've got ocean settlers for deep water. That is very exciting. Let me give you a quick run through at what's just changed. Of course, in this age, 
the world looks that little bit more beautiful as well just in my humble opinion i don't know something about the shadows maybe perhaps also sticking with engineering we could lean really heavily into rare earth metals with this silicon valley looking figure i haven't tried this one before i'm quite keen to do it video game studio would be our unique improvements specialist points computers knowledge and more engineering here is not the final move that we'll make but the second last and it's a fairly predictable one for me because we're in the age of utopia right now of course it does give us that age some unique things to try deep sea special operations center research and development biomedical protected airspace i think that market interference is also unique to this era that ship certainly looks at a naval raider hello you heavy machinery and other technologies like computing will allow me to make the most of those rare earth metals that i was talking about before i'm going to grab oceania first though because it's on theme and on point and i want to try and settle in the deep water oh and before i get too ahead of myself i can also use a peaceful resolution culture power having just unlocked it we don't need to get too nasty with it uh, and we have three government types to choose from in this final bit Communist governments replace luxury with a boost in production and ideology. Could be useful for me, actually. Demo maybe. Democracy really relies on regional defenses efficiencies. It's all about knowledge and fundamentalists leaning into the faith base, which I haven't really done all that much of. So I'm probably looking to either be a democracy or a communist state. Plus one knowledge from research, computers, and computer simulation has a great synergy with what I'm building right now, and therefore it's probably going to be my pick. I'm sort of tempted by the extra production boost that communism brings, as well as the early and easy ideology, but yeah, kind of seems Silicon Valley, democracy. We're getting a theme going here. <laughs> I'll grab the first unlock because it's free, and then we'll try and get some sort of supercomputers online and also settle in the ocean. There's a lot going on in these eras. I hope I haven't overwhelmed you too much now. I'm going to take just a little bit of time to upgrade and move through what, what will likely be some quieter turns as I get myself settled into the age of utopia. And now, on turn 267, through this handy-dandy create ocean settler government domain power, I have this unit waiting here in the harbour. Let's bring it out a little bit. Okay, so what I'm thinking is... I probably want to treat it exactly the same as I would on land, stay away from barbarians as much as possible, and settle near this energy, right? Power. Let's try and get some good resources out of this bad boy. I've discovered most of the neighboring continent, or at least the area around the outside of it, as my settler comes under attack from all sides. Jeepers. Lucky it's so strong. Let's just double check. Are you? Yeah, okay. So he throws a spear at you. You charge him. The damage is not great. The damage is not great. We have low morale though, so we run away very quickly. That's the blue bar. And of course, in this case, that's a good thing because I want to run away before I lose too much health. Uh, the downside is I probably can't move and settle in the same turn. And they're likely to push me away from this spot, which is exactly where I want to be. The US do, however, want open borders, and I'll allow it, and it looks like, unless our dude perished, say it ain't so. No, he's all good. He was just hiding behind that frustratingly large notification. Okay, now that it hasn't moved this turn, I can found the city. Here it is. Where is it? Here it is. <laughs> and now we have to wait until I can integrate it. Fortunately, I haven't really used any of these powers yet. So it's still very cheap. This integrate vassal power, for example, adds plus five integration per turn. So I'm just going to spam out those. I could also send a unit, an envoy, to speed it up a little bit more. But I might stay away from that. Capital now generate rare earth metals. Plus one rare earth metals on ten targets. So jumping into a city, I should, yeah, bam, there it is. I already have access to one rare earth metal. That's pretty powerful. I don't yet have the improvements to harness it, but one improvement soon will allow us to turn those into something really special. Oh, oh my goodness. Okay, here's something kind of fun. Culture power done the second time I've done it this turn. 
Eureka. Now I go into Arts and I spawn an artist, something we haven't really done before. And the artist has two actions. The artist can either do this first action here, creating an artwork good, or this other Mona Lisa looking one, which basically converts it into culture. 352, instantly completing. I used my Eureka, lather, rinse, and repeat. Now I've done it three times, so the cost has increased a little bit now, but that is a very, very powerful little way to quickly convert domain experience, in this case the arts, into three culture powers in a turn, a huge boost to research. This thing was just as expensive as the rest of these barely a turn or two ago. Now I'm almost my way through computing, and this will allow me to beeline a really powerful and relatively early surge in knowledge. On turn 276, you join me. With computers just being researched, I found these brain-looking things, which do in fact turn out to be brain coral. One of my scouting ships has managed to discover that. Also, lots of interesting places with double oil and that kind of thing. I think instead of uh, changing my initial one from a vassal to a proper region, I'm going to instead spend my government XP again on getting another one of these settlers ready, because now that I've discovered these brains, I want to settle a city on top of the brains as well. I think that only makes sense. Strategically, it's also quite a nice spot, because it shuts off this access way to Rio de Janeiro, forcing it probably through this very narrow passage out via Corbe. I am a little bit concerned here on turn 279 about this massive buildup of Japanese troops. Now, looking at them, they're not as advanced as I am potentially, though they do have cannons, which I don't. It's just the sheer number of them that has me a little bit concerned. I mean, we can kind of squeeze them out <laughs> by claiming these territories. And of course, improving the tiles that have been built on them a long, long time ago. I still don't think I can quite rebuild this town. No, apparently not. That's okay. So long as they don't have it, that's good enough for me. We should be able to defend at least. Defending tends to be much easier uh, than attacking. So I'll rest on that. Uh, as we're also going to start getting computers online. In fact, let's do that now. Let's first upgrade them. Computer Factory provides an extra computer alongside all of the other upgrades, I think I'm ready to start producing. Here's a tile in the middle of nowhere, a, a suspicious tundra tile. And what I can build here is either a computer lab, converting one rare earth metal into one computer for five knowledge, or we have the computer lab itself. I believe the next step up, converting a computer into a simulation, providing even more knowledge out of it. So that's sort of a double uh, resource chain. And then here we have an office, which can convert the computer into data, which will in future be a need. For now though, let me get this glorious computer factory online, obviously adding a lot of knowledge, right? A lot. We're getting two computers out of it now, which is great. And if I wanted to, I could find another tile that doesn't really have anything on it. I'm not even farming these olives. And once I have enough points, I could build this computer lab. And you probably know the drill by now. It would convert one of those computers that I'm making uh, into a simulation, providing even more knowledge. Fukuoka now likely looking much more knowledgeable than the rest, right? Two computers. This city is producing 22 of my knowledge income. If I compare that to the rest, what have we got? 8, 13, even the capital only at 14. So getting these things online, getting specialist points as quickly as I can, is very important to me. On turn 282, I've brought one of my battleships to be stationed here in Thebes. Thebes is just about ready for integration, but thankfully, the one that we prepared earlier here is ready to go. 85 government experience, and now... I have it unlocked. Obviously, we just have deep water tiles and they don't really provide a lot. I probably want to get one of these buildings online. There's the import slots. Interesting. A surface boy. Two import and two export. So I can send the metals out and I can bring food or production in. Alternatively, I can get one of these buildings built proper. Though without being able to bring power in, that's going to be quite difficult. So it's going to take a little bit to get these cities online. And then I have all of these special tile improvements, deep sea homes, and oil wells. And that is, of course, how I'll get the power here 
So let me completely just reverse what I've just said. I'm sorry if you're sitting there screaming going, you've already got the power in your tile improvements, you big numpty. You're absolutely right. Yes, I do. What's the most important thing in that case? Probably food. Let's get deep sea husbandry online and instead use the tile improvements to unlock this stuff. Oil's going to be the easiest one by far because it's the cheapest. Let's get that online. Now we have access to some glorious oil and rare earth metals in this bougie city that is yet to have anything actually meaningful built on it. And I need a lot more specialist points to do it. Okay, on turn 289, let's lean into Utopia that little bit more. Firstly, splashing a little bit on democracy. Plus one knowledge from research, computers, and computer simulation goods. Let's buff those just that little bit more. And then turn to this deep sea dwelling. Because I can rush deep sea husbandry out. That will give us plus 10 food. Allow us to start growing a little faster. Now I can probably also lean into something like the operations center for two specialists. Let's rush that out. It's only 2,000. Deep Sea Command Center is online next. I also have some specialist points that I could use. Not quite to get anything super special, but I could get this Deep Sea Biome. Providing some housing and ideology. A bit of power drain. I think that's okay. It'll future-proof this place well in advance for ideology. But housing will be needed and won't be easily built. So really laid the groundwork here for one of these uh, utopian cities. Is it utopian? Oh, I suppose. If that's your idea of utopia. <laughs> Life under the sea. I can't even swim, so it's probably not the best for me, though. I guess it's fully contained, so... I don't, I don't know. Down here on Thebes, I have enough, finally, to take advantage, I think, of some of these brains, right? So, there are a lot of different centers that I can build on top of this. And by and large, it seems to me that they all provide plus one of the general domain experiences, and then they lean into that special thing, like we talked about earlier. This one provides 10 specialists, so I think it makes sense to build this one first, generate 10 specialists per turn out of this little specialist factory down here. It's a little short of brain corals, by the looks. But oh man, here's my second big dumb dumb moment, I am so sorry. Coral harvester is needed first, then... I have the brains required. I'm looking at the good like, why is it red? Is red because you're not harvesting the brains, you noob. And therefore it's useless. Now, if you make a mistake like this and you can't reverse it because you haven't realized in the same turn, when you destroy an improvement, you do get a little bit of a refund. So it's not the end of the world, but of course kind of sucks because it's set me back a little bit here. I need to harvest the brains and then actually make the most of them somewhere else. And just like that, the people are now happy. A coral harvester, harvesting the brains, and then a deep sea training center to train the brains, or more appropriately to convert them into specialists. Now that I just have this huge amount of specialists, I can properly get this going. More harvesting. The trouble is, this place really needs power and food as well. The brains, or I hope the people, uh, are very, very hungry. So I'll have to return there and give it some food, Maybe also export some food to it if we can get some slots open. Not a bad idea because at the moment it's really struggling. Okay, on turn 306, my research has just surged thanks to popping up all of these computer labs, computer factories, and also a little island utopian paradise, although distinctly there's a lack of an island, is now doing really well as well with these uh, biomedical centers providing 10 knowledge. Got two of these bad boys running, generating a lot of specialists per turn. And the reason, of course, why I've brought you back in now is because I'm about to move through. Now, my choice was limited. If I'm the one leading through the world, I can't choose, it seems, one of those uh, alternate ages twice in a row. I guess somebody else might have to pull me through. I'm not sure. But what I do know is that the one after it is set to be quite explosive because, indeed... We're running into the end game now. There you'll notice yet again the color of the map now reverted back to the kind of style, the kind of sort of contrast and shadows that it normally shows in a standard age. This age will be the age of information. Data will be the final unlock once I pay my way out of that chaos. Never mind that. Let me just sweep that under the rug. Nothing to see there. 
Uh, I've moved through first every time. Of course, that's exclusively thanks to my knowledge output. Uh, the first nation in this age to build the internet bankbone. Backbone <laughs> receives well. <laughs> bankbone. Bit of Freudian slip related to that. And as I say, information and the final age approaches. The Jumbites, Japanese, sending me a gift again and again. Let's take a look at the options on offer. I have three victory ages and then one crisis kind of victory age to choose from. There's the age of transcendence, archangels, departure, and singularity. Now, the age of transcendence requires the completion of social fabrics, as you can see. Let me just talk you through each one of these so you know what you're in for. It once we go through to it, then requires us to really lean into those. It has technologies that can unlock more. It's all about harmony. It's about keeping the peace and researching your way through all of these advanced sort of societal fabric trees. Archangels is slightly more explosive. Indeed, the warlike one of these three, at least. Uh, it encourages you, or requires you, I should say, to have half of the world's population under your control, and it gives you these giant death lasery things to do it. Age of Departure is kind of like a scientific victory, if you will. Think building a spaceship and then getting the heck out of here. And Singularity, which I haven't actually played through, I believe is triggered by having too many computers, which could be a path I'm quickly going down. And obviously it's a crisis age. So uh, definitely the strangest one of these three. My research is insanely high at this point. I'm going to move through to things like information and global networks to double down on this explosive research power. Here also is a data center improvement to get that next level uh, of need online. And also the supercomputer, which gives a ridiculous amount of knowledge. And I believe triggers the charges for this, the age of the singularity <laughs> oh dear i want to do either singularity or archangels because i believe they're the most exciting this one would be the least exciting to watch departure probably not much better these two i think are the really exciting ones though i've barely played with either of them holy cow and it's a good thing i'm a hit on my knowledge these troops have reduced strength because they are transported in the ocean and there are a lot of armies. I assume heading toward Washington, my one ship isn't really going to be able to do a lot to stop them either. I can keep plinking away, destroying one at a time, but it ain't going to cut it. Uh, this is, I think, a mess for future me to deal with. All right, with a ragtag group of dudes coming up, I've got a submarine, or actually a, this very unique little unit here, a drone submarine, uh, but also a sort of slightly more regular army There's a little bit more force behind me now there'll be more rounds to this fight and i can finally start to weaken this incoming army because even if it's not coming for me now it will be coming for me eventually interesting my navy came under fire and i think it was an airstrike it was so the other continent is far more advanced as i suspected they might be but wasn't quite sure. So to advance this crisis age situation that I'm trying to build, I'm gonna to head to somewhere like Antioch, which has two computers ready to go. And with the benefit of all of these saved up specialist points, which I can sort of jump along and spend some of the improvement ones on upgrades, I'm gonna to navigate to this tile, actually maybe this crappier one, and build a supercomputer, converting two of my computers, six knowledge, to two simulations, so eight knowledge, one exploration XP. <laughs> Check out this innovation. MMORPG, the game developers of Greece, have invented a pinnacle of the medium called Massively Multiplayer Online Role Playing Game. This will give an improvement video game studio plus one computer simulation output, which is actually really good because I'm probably now much more tempted to build it. See, I haven't even unlocked it because I looked at it and thought, well, video game studio converts computers into video games. But now that it's also going to provide a computer simulation, I think that almost makes it better. If not for the really noticeable lack in knowledge generation. Although actually, yeah, no, it's probably better now. 
Alrighty, let me get one of these video game studios online. Don't know why I said that as if it was such a foreign term. Video game. Uh, we don't quite have the computers to work it, but if you cast your eyes up to the top left, you'll notice that I am indeed generating crisis charges for the AI Singularity Age. I feel like kind of an exciting one for us to finish in. Plus one per super computer improvement per turn. Uh, it should be fairly easy for me to generate those. And just like that, but a couple of turns later, as you can see, I've been locked out of the rest of the ages because I've met the preconditions for a crisis age. In this case, of course, getting those AI singularity charges. And I'm going to throw caution to the wayside and in exactly 12 turns, probably less if I can give... Oh, no, that's not happening. <laughs> in at least 12 turns, I will be able to bring us through to the final age and the most alternate of alternate victory ages available in millennia, we should probably start preparing with some military units. I have a few in my cities, but some of these armies are stronger than others, it would be fair to say. And maybe actually finishing that digital library and starting to build soldiers or modern machine guns uh, will be in my best interest. So I'm going to start to move toward that in these 12 turns. The AI singularity is upon you. <laughs> okay, so that's me fully crossing over the, uh, the the crisis age criteria. Now I just need to complete the research. Goodness gracious me. I hope this doesn't turn to absolute custard, but I guess it will make an interesting video ending if it does. Oh, I can't unload these troops anywhere because this place is full of dudes. How annoying. But I think... I can bribe them out of the way, dismiss this attack, and then unload these dudes. The beauty of these powers that I've barely used. Let me bribe them as well. Then we'll go force march on this army. They can march right into this. Why am I doing this, you might ask? Why send the tanks all this way? Well, because I want my ocean-faring city, the city of Thebes, to have access to some land-based tiles. Because then I can use them for a solar farm and now Thebes has all of the power it could ever need. I've cheated the system by building uh, some land-based power for it. And then in future, I'll grab this tile. We'll get whatever else we need. We'll get this place really trucking along. It won't be able to get that extra brain, but it's using the two brains it's got very well, I believe, anyway. Trying as much as I can. <laughs> I've gone a little bit overambitious on the improvements, uh, but nonetheless, I think, we're, I think we're doing this fairly well. And here we have it, everybody. This is the final age. It's now or never. Welcome to the age of singularity. Computers everywhere are going rogue. Nations in this age or earlier, sorry, ages prior to now, are immediately defeated by rogue AI. What? <laughs> Nations in age eight or earlier are immediately defeated by rogue AI. Wow. So if you get left behind, you're out. Rogue AI are attacking your nation, hacking improvements and reducing AI alignment. If alignment reaches zero, your nation falls to AI. Building AI personality core improvements restores the alignment, but also attracts rogues. Achieve victory by being the first nation with 10 AI personality core improvements. Right. So the task is to be alive, firstly, otherwise you got wiped out. And then it's to fend off rogue AI while simultaneously building cause that they are attracted to that makes sense the jumbites have been eliminated china has been eliminated the united states and revolutionary greece all gone i just about could have won if it weren't for the zulu over here take a look at the mini map down the bottom look at all of this <laughs> Oh, this is fantastic. I haven't played this age yet. So this is the very first time I've got to truly experience it. And it looks like their dudes have just been left behind as rebels. The entire Jumbite or Japanese nation, as I've been calling them, just completely obliterated into dust. Uh, there's a paper mill being improved. Hilarious. <laughs> Other improvements are available. Brain Chip Education School. Oh, I haven't even looked at the research yet. I've gotten too far ahead of myself. So I see a firewall security restores a large amount of AI alignment. 
using an engineering culture power. Now that could be very useful to me. AI core firewall reduces alignment decay at the cost of power. Programmed compassion doesn't really sound a lot like me, but it can use specialist points to reduce alignment decay. Okay, so there's all sorts of advanced improvements that lean into it by the looks. I also see electromagnetic pulse, which unlocks a whole load of futuristic looking shite. It looks awesome. EMP bombers. I mean, I'm also going to need to defend myself. So there's some logic into picking up either aggressive things or defensive things. Convert an enemy nation's improvement into a corrupted AI core. So I could also use manipulation and intrigue to take them down. Oh, and yikes, barely panning over the map. AI, <laughs> oh my goodness, what are you? Robot militia. Good God. This is a long and drawn out fight and not an easy one. We didn't even destroy that thing. Force march, get yourself back in there. Take out this robot militia again. It is by far and away the least important one. But let this be a demonstration. That thing fully healed. Oh dear lord. Okay. <laughs> Please. My overlords. No. Right. So the AI are appearing out of these bases. Spawning as if they are just ginormous barbarians. In that case they seem to be eating up the formerly Japanese troops. What I'm concerned about is they're going to smash through my towns. Though it looks like they hold up just. Now part of that will be thanks to the extra defense that I've got in democracy. So I'm feeling really justified in that now. My actual troops though, especially those outdated dudes, are being obliterated. Let's see how this AI did against... Oh, look at the Robo City in the background. <laughs> that's, that's great. Okay, so 16 rounds. It's a long fight. Looks like my cities themselves can defend against at least one of these attackers. So that's something. Ah, oh, this is actually providing education. So my dudes are getting really smart, but that's not necessarily transmitting into exactly that much knowledge. In fact, that's not what it does at all. So uh, need to keep that in mind. So just thinking out loud, while the other victory conditions kind of ask me to, ooh, to reach for something, this one is effectively, wow, this is a powerful innovation, times two attack versus rogue AI and times two defense. These things are getting incredibly violent. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven of them. Stomping out of these bases, formerly Japanese territory. They've actually just completely ran over that town. Two of them have grouped up here. They're going to be able to destroy that town. Ay, 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 ay. I think I can take down this one rogue dang robot soldier in this case uh with all of these dudes yes they can okay well nearly the trouble with not removing it completely is now it survives another turn they seem to have great healing abilities and all sorts oy, oy, oy. my towns are being destroyed i'm having to fall back and fall back again and again i need to send i think some extra support to these towns because they are the targeted area more than anything else Okay, so two new cultural powers. I have spawn assault rifle units in each of my regions based on the number of allies. Not particularly useful, but also this fun one to try. A core security patch restoring a large amount of AI alignment plus 50 to the AI alignment score, boosting me back up 100% aligned. <laughs> Very good. Very good. Of course, the minus, bad. I want to keep it high. Keep me safe. Right? <laughs> right? And I really want to get vision over these guys too. As soon as we have this hack available, uh, that's the next thing I'll research. In the meantime, I suppose I could move in a little closer. That's a lot of navy. <laughs> Whoa. Yes, so the AI alignment score decreases increasingly over time. Now on turn 344, it's at minus 12. And so you have to try and figure out ways to boost your score, right? To try and keep it high. Because if it falls below 50, corrupt AI cores spawn. 
If it falls below zero, you're out. So effectively, it's a standoff. I'm trying to defend myself against these relentless AI attackers while also trying to build up my defenses against them, for lack of a better word. Now, in some cases, that will be jet bombers in reality, but also things like this, the AI core firewall, which provides, I believe, minus five alignment decay. So if I can get these online in every city, even though in this one it's fairly expensive, maybe not the deep sea command <laughs> centers. Here's what I can buy right now. Three turns, 2,400 bucks. Let me get that online. We'll also maybe invest in some more advanced technology here too. I see some construction bots. Let's get those for seven turns. And hopefully now the extra pressure on the alignment should help me be the last man standing. And just like that, across a turn, the Brazilians were taken out. My AI defenses, getting those firewalls online, and crucially, having a nice head start, have indeed taken me through to victory. That almost certainly the most chaotic victory age you could find. And if we take a look at the map, yes, indeed. Not a single semblance of them left, only their armies fairly large groupings in and around their city. This massive <laughs> cluster along the coastline of all sorts of things look like they upgraded their artillery, they've got tanks, they've got air defenses, but of course now all of their cities have turned into these AI cores spitting out more and more disastrous AI. Though luckily for me, uh, I was the last man standing. Thank you very much for joining me today in this video. Of course, this series was brought to you thanks to Paradox Interactive and a huge thanks for the early look at Millennia. My goodness, I've been able to delve into this game and I still haven't been able to play all the ages. So I dare say you'll probably see a bit more from me as the game releases and we can all get into it in a little bit more detail. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you next time.